costs of paper. So one big factor deals with costs of paper. And another factor deals with printing costs. Um, the costs of buying ink and also um, the printing costs associated with large printers. There's the time spent making copies and then there's also just efficiency, getting more done. So um, one classroom in any given school can use anywhere from 15 to 30,000 sheets of paper. That's if you go off of the uh, equation that one student may be using five sheets of paper a day times 20 students times 180 days. And that's how you could quickly get into tens of thousands of sheets of paper every day um, being used by, by students. So going paperless, and I'm going to switch over to um, my HyperDoc at this point, is all about preparation. And I'll say up front that I honestly believe that the biggest um, obstacle that you may find in going paperless has to do with taking the time to prepare or even finding that time to prepare, especially if you are a busy classroom educator. But if you invest in some of the things that I'm about to talk about in terms of time, I think you're going to reap a large reward in your teaching later on down the road. And if you um, are a classroom teacher and you're logged into this broadcast, please feel free to share your experience, um, type it into the chat box. And I'll also pause and find out if any of you have any um, experiences that you'd like to share with going paperless. So in terms of going paperless, the first step, I think, is to begin to use Google Drive. So Google Drive is a tool that the district makes available um, through your district account. When you log into Google, um, you will notice that you have access to a drive. It's going to be located in your app grid. And the first step is to realize that you can do a couple of different things. And you can go either way first. You might want to begin by uploading your resources that are in your home directory or your school's T drive up to Google Drive, which is fairly simple. The new button on the left side allows you to begin to upload folders and also files. You might want to start there. So when I click the new button, I can go to file upload and go to my desktop and begin to um, upload even entire folders at a time if I want to. So now I have a whole folder uploaded to my Google Drive. Um, and it did it just that quickly. So now I have my files in a more secure area where I can access them anywhere that I can get to the internet. Um, I'm no longer tied to my home directory or my T drive um, when I need to access something. Anytime I can access it uh, through the web, I have access. You may also want to consider uploading files that you have stored on different USB drives. And if you're like me and you've lost the USB drives before, then you'll understand how um, important it is to go on, gather up your USB drives, and then start uploading your materials. If you're, if you're like me, you may also have a very um, extensive, let me make sure that screen sharing is working. All right. You may also have an extensive um, H drive. You may have a whole lot of materials that are located um, in your home directory or on your T drive. And it's fairly straightforward to go in and move those um, or articles, teaching resources, and materials over to your Google Drive. Again, when you hit New, and you say file upload, it's going to take you into your computer and you can go in and see this H drive that I have and it has a lot of resources in it from a, a lot of years over time. It's a fairly straightforward process to, to select a folder and then to go ahead and um, add that to your, your Google Drive. The next step 
then is to create a folder structure in your Google Drive that works for you. And one of the resources that I'm sharing today, you're going to notice is a little screencast that'll take you through the steps of getting your resources um, moved over into your Google Drive. So it's a screencast, it's on screencast.com, and it'll show you the, how to go through the steps um, of how to take your resources from your H home directory or your USB drives or from your desktop on your computer and to get them all uploaded to your Google Drive. There's also a few self-learning resources out there that I'd like to share. One of them is um, the Google Drive Canvas course. It's currently wrapping up and um, it's going to re begin registering again on May the 1st. And in the Google Drive course, I'll walk you through um, getting started with Google Drive, essential skills, organization, and then take you into tips and tricks. So if you're interested in learning more about Google Drive, there's a Canvas course out there. I also want to point out a couple of other things. Um, there is a website called G, uh, CF Learn Free, and it has a bunch of tutorials about Google Drive and Google Docs as well. So you may find that um, some of these tutorials are incredibly helpful and allow you to look at some of the things with Google Drive and getting your uh, materials and resources based on Google Drive incredibly helpful. So that's um, GCF Learn Free, the Google Drive Canvas course, and then also the EBR EdTech YouTube channel features a um, playlist on Google Drive. So in addition to tutorials on other topics, um, one of the topics that I've been working on um, is Google Drive and getting tutorials set up on Google Drive. So if you'd like to learn more, um, there are hyperlinks. There are three different ways you can learn more. The next thing that you want to think about as you convert to going paperless is to think about all of your office documents that you already have. And the good news about that is that you can convert office documents to Google Drive um, pretty quickly and you can even um, opt to be able to edit those documents inside of Google Drive. And what I mean by that is, for example, I've got um, a Word document in here in my Google Drive. I uploaded it to Google Drive, and the way that my settings are um, configured in Google Drive, it has it retained my Word file, and then it also created a Google Doc for me. If I open this Word file with a Google Doc, I can edit it and do the things in it that I would normally do, and then um, download this document as a Word file again if I needed to, or I could continue to use it as a Google Doc. I could use it in Google Classroom. I could continue to use it in Google Drive as well. One of the benefits of that is that um, you don't have to spend tons of time recreating the wheel. If you have documents, they're already in a Word format, go ahead and upload them to your Google Drive. So if you have a lot of materials, this can be um, a real time saver. Over in your Google Drive settings, I'm going to go all the way over to the right side of the screen and go to my settings and settings again. You're going to notice that there's some um, shortcuts here for some things, and one of them has to do with Google Docs. So if you convert uploads to Google Docs format, it will automatically change your Word documents into Google Docs, or you could opt to have, um, continue to have both versions of a file um, available to you after you upload your Word documents. Just know that in your settings, you have the ability to make some modifications to your Google Drives to determine if you want to have um, Word documents remain in Word format or and edit them, or if you want to have them go exclusively to Google Docs. The other thing that um, is fairly recent in Google Drive is that you can create templates or use templates directly from Google Drive. So when you are in um, Drive and you hit the New button and you open a new Google Doc, 
let me hit that again. You have the option to start a blank document or to go from work from a template. And the reason I'm pointing that out is just to let you know that you don't have to start from scratch on your journey in terms of going paperless, especially if this is a, a relatively new journey for you. If you're used to the idea of using Google Drive, you're probably okay with uploading things and creating Google Docs. But if not, just know that you can access all of these templates. All right, I see some, some folks are, um, are calling in. If you would mute your microphone, if it's getting a little bit loud where you are, it helps out a lot. Okay, so just know that these templates are here. Many of them are geared towards education and they're designed to make life a lot easier so that you don't have to start from scratch. So notice that at the top in our domain, we've got educational templates available. Here's an essay. And as you can see, there are many, many more of these templates. There are reports, lesson plans, class notes, letters, and more. So a couple of things that I'm recommending, use the templates that are in Google Drive, edit your Microsoft Word documents in Google Drive, and then download them back into um, Word format if you want to. And then on the road to going paperless, start scanning things that are not in a digital file format. It's totally up to you if this is something that you want to do. It all depends on whether or not you have a lot of tried and true resources that are, in, um, that are not in a digital format. But a scanner can be helpful to use to scan purchase orders, receipts, and then also maybe some of those pages and um, maybe charts that you may use or graphic organizers you may use in a classroom that you do not have um, in a digital format for some reason. Now, if you don't have access to a traditional digital scanner, there are a couple of tips and tricks that I recommend that you can use to continue to, um, to bring documents into Google Drive. One is the Google Drive mobile app. And um, I have hyperlinked to today's HyperDoc just a tiny video of me using the Google Drive mobile app. You'll see it at the bottom right of the screen. And what the Google Drive mobile app can do for you is it will allow you to hit the plus sign in Google Drive. So I log into my Google Drive on the mobile app just like I would on my computer. And then I can start taking photos of uh, documents that I have. And then Google Drive allows me to use the photo that I have, that I've taken of a document, and it, it uploads it to my Google Drive automatically. So you may not have ever um, thought about using the Google Drive mobile app, but if you consider using it, you'll be able to begin to scan some of those resources um, that you may have that are not in a digital format. I have a few other recommendations about that. If you have an Android um, phone, then um, going Google Drive for Android is a good choice because if you, um, you'll notice that there are a few additional features that you have to manipulate um, objects when you scan them for Android. There are three other apps that I've used also to scan materials using my um, cell phone or maybe using a tablet if you have an iPad or Surface tablet. One is called Office Lens. And it allows you to scan um, any kind of business document, classroom documents. And uh, the nice part about Office Lens is that it will um, it adjusts to whether or not you're scanning photos. Um, documents or if you are scanning your, if you're taking a picture of your interactive whiteboard in your classroom. So Office Lens, there are um, apps for Android, Apple, and also of course for Windows um, based phones and tablets. Genius Scan is another product out there that will help you get your um, documents 
that are not in a digital format into some kind of a digital format. It'll create PDFs for you. That's called Genius Scan. Check your mobile app store to make sure that it's available for the device or devices that you have, but it's a, it's a pretty good one. And I have one more that I recommend, and it's called Cam Scanner. There are a couple of different versions out there of Cam Scanner. And uh, one's free, and um, one is also um, a paid app. But you can see it's available for Android, iPhone, iPad, and Windows Phone, and it turns images into um, editable text in the paid version, and it turns scans into PDFs in, in the free version. So that's called Cam Scanner. So if you have a significant amount of materials over a number of years, these are some options for you. And I've got some links at the bottom of the page to, your, um, to some app stores. Okay. Once you get your materials up into Google Drive, you're going to want to use Google Classroom in your district account. And you're going to want to begin to share aligned links with your students. And I've got some hyperlinks to some resources that um, are a great place to get started. You're going to see that some of the hyperlinks that I'm sharing will take you to some of the textbook resources that we have. If you're using the textbook resources right now in a paper form, Beginning to use those in a digital form is a good place to begin, although maybe that's not where you're going to want to stay. Ultimately, you're going to find that if you have access to technology in your class, you're going to want to interact and students will want to collaborate and do um, things that are interactive. So some of the links will take you to things like Think Central for K-5, Social Studies for K-5, Connect Ed, Science, and, and more resources here. Um, all of our online textbook resources have places where you can download um, files that you can then add to your Google Drive. So, for example, in Think Central, that looks like going into the teacher edition or even going into the resource guide and finding a PDF document, which can then be downloaded. Okay, once this document is downloaded, it can be easily moved over to Google Drive, and then you have it in a digital format. It's oftentimes a lot easier to display this document in this format on your interactive whiteboard than it is to use it underneath a document camera. Um, once it's in this format, and in your Google Drive, you're going to find that um, you can connect to the document, and this is a PDF, and you'll even find that you'll be able to annotate on that document when you display it on your interactive whiteboard and kind of reduce the need to use um, a document camera or have a document camera connected. And you'll see the same things across the board in other um, textbook series that we have. Here's the um, social studies series, and here's a document from the social studies series. It's in a PDF format. When you download it, just move that over to Google Drive. If these are the things that you're already using with your students, it would be an easy transition for them to begin to see those documents in a digital format. And here's the math series. The same thing, there are places in the math series in Glencoe Math, McGraw-Hill, to download your um, resources in a digital format and move them over to your Google Drive. Ultimately though, you may not want to use um, the same worksheet or the same workbook page just in a digital format. You may want to go well beyond that. And to do that, you'll want to bring in some resources that allow kids to collaborate, to do research, to communicate, and to interact. And you'll find some, some of those um, links here in, um, in this table and also in the table below. Some of the things that I recommend are listed, and you may want to type in a few of the things that you like in the chat box. Again, 
these are just um, some suggestions. You may have other resources that you like a lot better. For example, nearpod.com is a website that allows teachers to explore and find or even create interactive lessons which can be displayed on an interactive whiteboard or shared with students on Chromebooks or computers. Nearpod.com. And when you go in and explore, you'll find that there are, there's a mix of free and paid resources. You'll also find that there are virtual field trips. Many of them have a price tag, but I only use the ones that are free. You'll also find that there is a large um, assortment of free activities on Nearpod.com as well. The fun part about using these resources that work entirely in a digital format is that they allow students to do things that it can be difficult to do in um, a paper or an analog format. For example, in this particular presentation, students get to draw and solve problems, and they get to do that interactively in real time with the teacher monitoring um, their work on the computer. And that can be tough to do in when students have uh, 26 different copies of a worksheet um, in the classroom for the teacher to have to pick up, evaluate, and then um, assign some type of grade to. So eventually, you'll want to move to using those tools that allow you to evaluate and assess student understanding in real time. And Nearpod is just one of those tools. And you'll see that there are several others listed. Another tool that you'll want to explore is called ClassFlow. And ClassFlow is kind of like the next generation of Promethean Active Inspire. So if you like flip charts, you'll probably like ClassFlow. It's giving me a tough time about logging in. Let's see. See, I might have to come back to Classroom because it's not letting me log in with my um, username and password. But Classflow is another. Classflow.com is a great resource that you can try. It's very similar to Nearpod. And I've got the hyperlink in the, uh, in the hyperdoc. Another tool that you want to use to go paperless is called Kahoot. And you'll see that the hyperlink that I have is for the student page, but there is a teacher creation tool as well. And Kahoot is a website created by teachers who, um, these were a bunch of classroom teachers, and they were um, blending learning using a mix of face-to-face, -face, whole group, small group, and then um, computers in the classroom to kind of create a blended learning experience for students. And they created this tool that allows um, teachers to create quizzes and a variety of other fun games. And it's very interactive and engaging. Me to enter my name, so I'm 
And so in Kahoot, teachers are, create quizzes that um, allow students to uh, demonstrate their understanding of different concepts. And it's a really fun way to get kids interacting and also collaborating as well because students can join up and play uh, in teams or they can play as individuals. And so the website to create and get more involved with Kahoot is called Kahoot.it on the teacher side. And then in the HyperDoc, you'll find the link to the student side of the program as well. A few guidelines for introducing your students to paperless um, resources in the classroom is to set up classes ahead of time on digital sites. Or if you have access to Google Classroom, if you're a Google Classroom teacher, use those resources that have um, access to Google Classroom. And I've got a hyperlink at the top of the digital resource page that will take you to um, the list of apps that work with Google Classroom. Now some of these might seem a little bit unfamiliar, but if you click around, you'll start seeing um, resources that maybe you've seen before. And if you're looking for reading and writing apps, there are a couple here that are really excellent. One is called Actively Learn, and it shares directly with Google Classroom. The cool part about Actively Learn is that there is a full library of assignments, of reading assignments. You can go in and search around in the catalog. You can search by standard, grade level, reading level as well, and find um, articles that you can then assign to students in a completely digital format. Once you do that, you can create questions, you can create notes, annotations and a lot more for students. So Actively Learn is a partner with Google and has a wonderful tool that shares directly with Classroom as well as New Zealand. It's one that many teachers are, around the district are using. And New Zealand features a full library of timely and relevant content. And the nice part about it is that you can access every article in different Lexile levels, as well as quizzes and writing prompts. So that's newzilla.com. On the Google for Education site, you'll also find um, resources that allow you to teach coding, STEM, math, and a whole lot more as well. There are constantly new resources that are being added to the Google for Education partner site. And once Google for Education becomes partners with that particular website, what that means is that you don't have to set up a class. You don't have to create student logins. You can use the student logins um, that kids are already using to access Google Classroom or to log into Chromebooks and Google. Okay. Um, I recommend that you introduce um, setup classes ahead of time or use the resources that are partners with Google for Education. You can also introduce one site or resource at, at a time. That helps students a lot. Introduce the next tool or resource only when kids are comfortable with the first one. Model a lot for students when you go digital and then have students model. Even make videos of, stu of students or allow students to make their own videos of them using websites and using tools so that um, there's, you have something in the classroom all of the time to use as a model. I recommend making screencasts of what students are supposed to do on websites. So the first time you um, bring a website in for students or a digital resource in for students, make a screencast of or record yourself actually using the resource doing the things that you would want the students to do. And tools that I've had success um, with in terms of doing this are Jing by TechSmith, 
Screencast-O-Matic is a great one because there is an app for the Chromebook or the Snagit Chrome extension. And all of these allow you to record your screen in real time. It'll show what you're doing while it's recording and you can be talking the students through the process of exactly what it is that you want and expect them to do when they use a digital resource. In addition to the three tools that I have listed here, you could also pair up um, a whiteboard app like Show Me and allow students to um, explain their thinking or maybe even create videos. So these are um, whiteboard sites and whiteboard apps as well. Once you do those um, kinds of things in terms of pulling in resources that allow kids to create, to interact, to collaborate, you may want to pull in video. And I've got two resources linked here. One's called Edpuzzle. And Edpuzzle allows you to take any video if you, can, if you have access to it on your um, computer or it pulls videos from a variety of websites, YouTube, Khan Academy, Nat Geo, Vimeo, and it allows you to add formative questions to that video. There's an entire library of content created by teachers or you can upload and create your own videos and questions. So as you can see, as students go through the process of watching this video, they have to pause as the video pauses and answer questions that check to determine whether or not they understand what they're watching. A tool that's very similar to Edpuzzle is called PlayPosit. And it's also a tool that works together with Google Classroom. It does the, basically the same thing. It allows you to create your own videos or you can find um, a large variety of content. It's been uploaded by teachers and shared out. And it does the same thing. You can find um, lessons that have been shared by teachers and questions added. So playposit.com, you can add questions, um, clip videos, take video clips, and then you can also find um, lesson analytics as your students watch the video and, um, and answer questions. This works great in the one-to-one -one environment, but it can also be set up as a workstation in the classroom where you, you, know, you don't have Chromebooks or you don't have um, a one-to-one -one situation going on. An additional tool is called Office Mix. And Office Mix is not made by Google, but it's a pretty powerful tool because what it does is that you can uh, download Office Mix, add it to PowerPoint, and create your own learning um, module or learning resource out of any PowerPoint presentation. So if right now you've got quite a lot of PowerPoint presentations that you may use in your class, you can add the Office Mix um, plugin for PowerPoint and then turn it into a learning activity. So the, this teacher created this office mix um, for her students simply by adding some voicing over some slides, so plugging in a microphone and then talking over some slides, and then also by pulling in some audio files. And then you, all, you can look at some of the different um, slides and you'll see where 
she dropped in images as well. So it takes it from um, a passive experience of just looking at slides or the teacher just reading some slides to students to a more interactive and um, engaging experience. And so this is Office Mix. It's a free plugin for PowerPoint. You simply download the um, Office Mix plugin, sign in with your Office 365 account. The program will download and you can um, install it um, in, it installs and you'll see it when you open up PowerPoint. And it lets you do a lot of cool things. Finally, I want to recommend that you um, practice digital citizenship or review digital citizenship with students really carefully. Review the agreement um, that students use if you're a Chromebook classroom. Make sure that they understand that in the process of going paperless, they have to be good digital citizens. If necessary, partner with your school's librarian um, to have students review the importance of online safety and also propriety. And create a custom contract as you go paperless um, and you bring more digital resources into your classroom if necessary. Any questions so far about um, going paperless? Some of the things that you could, some of the tools you can use and also some of the um, strategies. All right, anybody have any favorite tools? If you've got a favorite tool, type it in the, in the chat box. I'm going to take you to a spot where you can find um, a great list of digital tools. And one place you can find some great tools that you can use in addition to the ones mentioned in this webinar is to go to the EBR EdTech website. And if you go in to um, support, I'm sorry, under training integration tools. you'll find some links that will take you to a slide deck uploaded by Ms. Keisha Arsenault. And um, this slide deck has hyperlinks to a variety of digital goodies. And so in addition to things like Classflow, Nearpod, News ELA, you're going to find that um, there's an entire slide deck with hyperlinks, introductory videos, to a variety of different tools. Again, each um, slide is hyperlinked. There are integration resources and also training resources that you'll find linked to all of these um, tools. You may see many things here that you know and that you've used in the past, or you may see some new things as well. So as you get into integrating technology in your classroom, if you're looking for something new, just come into the favorite EdTech integration tools. And if you want to learn more, um, keep in mind that we do have additional webinars coming up in the G Suite for Education webinar series. You can register at the hyperlink. You don't have to register, but if you register in advance, I do send you an invitation um, and a calendar invite, and uh, that way you'll get a reminder prior to the webinar. Next week, of course, is we're on spring break, but if you tune in a week from Wednesday, we will have um, April 26th, and we'll be flipping direct instruction with Google Forms. And I'll talk about specifically some 
ways and strategies that you can use to take Google Forms, bring them into your classroom, and use them to enhance direct instruction. If you'd like to learn more, plug into Canvas, the district's online um, professional learning community, and um, you'll find that we've got an entire list of online courses that you can take. Some of them are content-based, and some of them are technology integration and tech tool themed. All right, thanks for attending today's webinar. This webinar is recorded and it will be posted on the um, EBR EdTech YouTube channel and on the, YouTube, on the EdTech page. It's worth one CLU and you'll get confirmation from ERO. Be sure to follow EBR EdTech on the new website and also here's a link to the YouTube channel that I was mentioning earlier. And on the YouTube channel you'll find tutorials, you will find um, the webinar Wednesday videos are posted on a playlist, and you'll also find some subscriptions to some great resources out there such as Common Sense Education, Kahoot, Google for Education, and a lot more. So at this point I'm going to pause. If you have any questions, feel free to type those in the chat box. If you have any t thoughts or any hyperlinks that you'd like to share, feel free to throw those in the chat box. Um, I'm going to stay around for a little while. And again, thank you for attending, especially those of you who are out of school.